guys, welcome, welcome to, to the Headlights Podcast with your regular hosts, Shayna, Clarissa, and Rafina. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to part two of the last episode. Introducing our special guest, he's an amazing husband, father, pastor of his kingdom church, a marriage counselor, and a phenomenal singer. Help us welcome Pastor Ori. <laughs> Hey guys, hey guys, what's going on? What's going on? Thank you so much for having me. We're so grateful for you coming on the show. Trust me, I'm excited, man. It's gonna be a good one. We're excited. You guys are joking, you know. Guys, this is but giggles, be, just get ready for the giggles. Okay, cool. Get ready I'm for good. the ad I'm good. I like some yeah, giggles. Yeah, the ad You know I'm always busting jokes. So right. It's, it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you know. Yeah. Just before we get into our heated yeah. conversation, mm. we're going to start with a little icebreaker and we're going to do a game of this or that. So I'm going to okay. ask you some questions and you just choose which one okay. that you would like or which one you'd prefer. Cool, go for it. Okay, so the first one is, would you rather see the future or change the past? Ooh. See the future. Mm. What's your reason for that? Um, past is past. Mm. You just have to look forward and there's no point in worrying about the past. Just yeah. look to the future, man. Amazing. Yeah. The second one is, mm. would you rather have 10 years free travel or 1 million to never leave the country again? Ooh, read that again. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather mm. 10 years free travel or 1 million to never leave your country again? 10 years free travel, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, man, don't try and restrict me to it. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> so the, UK, the UK was even rated the second most miserable country. You want me to, exactly so you want me to say it? Hey, never. For 1 million, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is... Yeah. Would you rather one hour a one hour in person chat with Jesus or go back to watch his ministry on earth? It's a very no, good question. No. I think I'd have to go with the hour chat with Jesus. Ooh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, man, I can ask questions. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even get a cheeky miracle. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Just quickly. Just lay hands on me. Come right. on. Right. Exactly. I love that question though. That's, That's It's really good. That's really good. good. I made them up that. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. Well done, Rupina. Well Just done. Just the credit, all right? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> so cool. let's get into it. Today yeah, we're going to go, have guys. a chat about lust with Pastor Ori yeah, and yeah. just get your views and your personal experience on how mm. it went for you. Can you share any personal experiences or challenges you've faced regarding lust and how your faith has helped you navigate them? Wow, like how long do we have? Um, <laughs> so we straight in. So I think for me as a young kid growing up, um, I had I had particular people who I was around, certain friends and all that kind of stuff. But when I was around 15, that's when I got exposed to like the whole world of like pornography, right? Mm. So as a young kid, I, I wasn't really exposed to those things. Like my, when I was, when I was living in Sierra Leone uh, okay. for the first nine years of my life, <laughs> my sisters were very protective of me. They kind of watched, checked what I was watching, all of that kind of it. stuff. But when I moved to the UK, um, yeah, things were just kind of open. And so when I actually gave my heart to Christ, right, mm. literally that same year is when I got exposed to that whole side wow. of the world. And it just gripped me. It mm. really did. And it was it was a struggle for a long time, even into like, even into the early years of my marriage. Mm. Wow. It was a real struggle. And obviously we'll talk about the, the yeah, depths of it later. Yeah. But But I think in terms of my faith, throughout that whole journey of struggling with that thing, I really found the kind of sovereignty of God yeah. because I think growing up in the church going to uni just being a young kid and experiencing certain things and seeing how people were treated and all this kind of stuff it really made me understand God's grace mm. because I think sometimes we we get to this point where we think that we are I think the church has always portrayed perfection and yeah. not progression mm. and so because of that I think it's kind of clamped people and made people feel like they're not worthy. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Jesus never did that. He yeah. never pushed 
uh, perfection. Yeah. It was almost like, look, we all know that we, you've got this issue. Now it's time to stop. Yeah. Now it's time to make the decision mm-hmm. to say, you know what? I'm not going to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go in this direction. But we all know it's hard, man. Yeah, it's, it's hard out here. It's hard, Hi. man. It's, it's hard. So yeah, so that's what that's what I would say. Um, so yeah, that pornography thing was definitely a big one. Mm. And it was a struggle to to break it. And I think to help anybody out there who's listening, I think it's one of those things where you have to be cognizant of your issue you have to Mm. face it and understand the depths of it because what it is it might be a bit deep but it's actually witchcraft because one of the things that i realized and what witchcraft is 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 something that's presenting itself that's not actually real do you get what i'm saying and so when you when you're in that world of pornography and stuff and even sometimes when i did some research about it the whole industry is based on creating a particular atmosphere which is not real yeah Yeah. because all the stuff that they be doing it looks mad and it grips you Mm. but it's not actually real because actually when you when you get married and you start you know actually seeing sex the reality of life and you you know what i mean you realize hold on a minute that's not (laughs) that's that's my job right (laughs) How do you do this? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So yeah. you begin to start realizing that <laughs> nah, this is a joke. Wow. And I think for me that was like that was the turning point because mm. I realize now that you know what, this is actually just a trap of the enemy. Yeah. Literally to keep you hooked, to think that you are the person that needs to pleasure yourself. Mm-hmm. Wow. And there's this yeah. whole big thing of self-care and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it might be controversial, but we're we're not helping ourselves by taking part in those in yeah. those things. Yeah. So we just have and to even be really... to touch on that, that's mm. it's more damaging to self rather than mm. self care. Yeah. It's destroying self. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because yeah. the sin the sin t- is is to your own body. Yeah, you're sinning against yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And I think we just have to remember that that God is sovereign. Yeah, mm-hmm. and He's holy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like sometimes. Uh, I, I sense that sometimes people are really, they feel really judged. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. By what Christianity has to say and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. we have to remember that God is loving. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And some of the rules that he's put in place is to protect. Yeah. Yeah. And I always say, I always share to people that you have to almost see it as a parent. And obviously being a parent myself to three boys, it's like there's certain things like our household, there's particular rules yeah. that myself and um, Pastor Siobhan have put in place to make sure that they grow up in a particular way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you get? Now, if they go to school or they go to, you know, somewhere external from the home and start behaving in a way that we haven't raised them to be, there's going to be consequences. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel like when you put it in that picture, you begin to understand that God's punishment so to speak which isn't really pun- well it's consequence isn't it yeah um it's not because he doesn't love you yeah a lot of times it's because he loves you yeah that's why he's like okay cool so you've made that decision so this is what you're gonna have to deal with yeah. and bring it back to myself mm-hmm. <laughs> i had to go through a lot of consequences and this is actually quite deep because i shared this with my wife um around the time a couple of maybe a couple of years into our marriage where i had to literally you know, share the depth mm. yeah. of my personal struggle. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? For her to realize that, and and for me to realize, because even when we first got married, like we struggled in that area. Can yeah. we stop you there though? Because we actually Have- asked you this. Yeah. So I don't want you to say too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that you have three sons. Mm-hmm. How do you go about protecting your protecting them Ooh, from lust? Okay. So. Everything is covered. Mm-hmm. I am in everything that they do. So from their, you know, their tablets, yeah, yeah. from, you know, the stuff that they work on. Um, my eldest is eight, going to be nine. So he's into art and drawing and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So I, I am very present. And I think just to kind of pause here, like for me, I didn't grow up with my dad, right? Mm-hmm. I, I was in touch with him but I didn't grow up with him being present in the home. And that's one of the commitments that I always said to myself that when I have children, I will be there. I'll be present, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually, Mm. psychologically. Mm. And it's a deep thing because even throughout parenting so far, 
the amount of things that we've had to deal with mm. that if I was not there mm. and it broke my heart because it just made me realize that there's so many young boys and girls yeah. in families where it's broken mm-hmm. yeah. and they're being exposed to yeah. stuff yeah. and there's nobody there to nip yeah. it early. Yeah. Right. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? To so say, nope, that's mm-hmm. not right. You can't yeah. watch yeah. that. You can't do yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? And that so, protection. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think for me, I just try to make sure that I'm in everything. Mm. Um, and I'm constantly, I don't, I, I don't want it to sound bad, but I'm constantly talking and teaching yeah, and, and, and them hearing my voice mm-hmm. yeah. because I feel wow. like that, because this, this is the model that God has given to us yeah. as the family unit. Do you know what I mean? Like for myself, and my wife, like we're supposed to be God's voice mm-hmm. to yeah. our children. Because the Bible says, raise them up a child in the way that they should go. When they are old, they won't depart from yeah. it. Yeah. So they're supposed to hear our voice mm-hmm. yeah. saying, you know what? You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. You know better. So I think for me, we just try to be present. We try to have conversations. Like I said to my son, I said, anytime you are having a hard time with something, just come to me. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. Doesn't matter how busy I am. If I'm on my phone or my computer or my laptop, whatever, just say to me, dad, we need to have a talk. Mm-hmm. And I've instilled that in them from when they were very, very young. And now <laughs> it's just so funny. He'll just come from school. He's like, dad, we need to have our talk. Oh, that's so amazing. And that melts my heart, man, oh. because I'm just like, it's just to, to for him to be able to be like, no, I need to talk to my dad yeah. about this. Yeah, that's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So. I love that, especially yeah. for me, because growing up, mm. I didn't have my father either. And I mm. think as a child, I was first exposed to lust very young. Mm. And that absence mm. allowed room for the the seed to grow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, having 100%. you there as a present father is Absolutely. so, so powerful yeah. to it stop is. those seeds from growing. And mm. you saying that you speak, you're cancelling it out mm. with your words. It's so beautiful. 100%. And uprooting it as, as soon as possible. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think the, the flip side to that as well is also modelling what it should be. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of me and my wife, like we're very affectionate in front wow. of the boys obviously Amazing. not too deep but um <laughs> <laughs> so, so silly <laughs> Right. Obviously. Not trying to get no one scared out there. I will not be the reason for your fall. Right. Right, 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 right. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so like just, you know, hugging and, you know, yeah. kissing and just having moments where we're hugging each other and they'll open the door and they'll see us. Th- like just those, because mo- mm. what, it's, what it's doing is it's mentally modeling yeah. wow. what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Incredible. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And I think when you, when you're intentional about that mm. stuff do you get it's like it's it's building because i i don't know what is how their mind is being yeah. framed yeah i can only do what i can do yeah. in faith that they will grab the right bits yeah. and that's the thing with yeah. kids you just don't know what, what they are yeah. perceiving yeah. what they're what do you know they're what i mean so, so for me true. i'm constantly explaining mm. myself do you get and even like on the on the discipline tip it's the same thing because it's like my sons know that I get very strict with them. Mm. They know that I'm a strict dad, but they also know that I love them. Yeah. And I'm very expressive about that as well. Wow. So that they physically know, even though I've just shouted at you and told you off and you cried a little bit, in two minutes, they run up to me and start giving me it's hugs. Lovely. And do you, do you understand? That's they understand. So, yeah. so it's it's all about intentionality. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how yeah. did you never get lost in courtship? so this is a big one right um you have to put boundaries in place Mm. boundaries is a massive massive thing that my wife and i talk about in terms of uh developing your relationship with Mm. the opposite sex um (laughs) and i think we we kind of i was very very strict at the beginning because of my previous relationship before my wife it was very physical Mm -hmm. you know there was nothing to do with god in it (laughs) it was just (laughs) self 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 Mm -hmm. yeah and i vowed to myself i said that look then i i (laughs) i even made a promise to god i said um the next number that comes into my phone wow. is going to be my wife. Wow. 
Oh, this is the prayer I need to be praying. Hi. So, so, so it's really funny because when it was playing out, I was just like, "Yo, is this actually happening?" Mm. So, quick recap of like how we met and stuff so we met on kind of like a ministry trip to liverpool and stuff she was siobhan was asked to come and sing i was part of the ministry team that was hosting like this uh different artists from 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 the uk and stuff and we met um in liverpool and then shortly after we basically gathered all the people who went to liverpool we kind of had like a get together type of thing yeah. and then um siobhan came to me and she was like how come I don't have your number? Because she had been she... connecting with some of the other guys mm. to do like Bible study and catch ups and stuff like that. So it wasn't even like a well, like, she was oh, trying to move to me or anything like that. It wasn't like that. Just to be kind, because I know she's gonna watch this <laughs> and she's gonna be like, <laughs> I was like "That's not how it works." <laughs> you better clarify. I was coming to write that. I was like, right, you go up and you say, why didn't I have your number? <laughs> <laughs> the rest all gonna start doing I was gonna that. Will you see what you're doing on Sunday? <laughs> you guys are gonna start using that bar, yeah? I'm gonna mean, copyright that thing, you know? <laughs> Why, you license imagine? that bar. Wow. Why so don't I have funny. Number? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, so she was just like, how come I don't have your number? Because it would be really cool like to stay in touch and blah, 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 blah. So I kind of paused because I was just like, hold on a second. What's going on here? <laughs> but obviously I gave her the number and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously we started a really great friendship and we kind of like moved on from there. Um but yeah, so whilst we, when we started dating, I said to her, look, I'm not going to kiss you. Wow. It's a lot, isn't it? I love that. It's uh, amazing. I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to kiss you until we get married. Um, and it was a hard one for me, but mm. I think I knew, and this is way where you have to know yourself. Yeah. Again. You have to know what your triggers are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you've got to literally put boundaries around those yeah. things to protect yourself. Because yeah. you can't trust yourself. Mm. Yeah. And I always say for me, kissing is one of those things where it's like when you take the wrong turn on a motorway. Like as soon as you take that mm. mop, like mm. it's a long it's a drive, long drive to go back. until the exit. <laughs> to get wow. back home. I'm wow. telling you, and I like can't go analogy. back. Yeah. 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 So, so, <laughs> right. so, good. so wow. I just said to myself, "Listen, I'm," you know, I, I said to her in in the car. I said, "Look, I'm not gonna kiss you." She was vexed, of course. I was yeah. just about to ask, what was her reaction? She was vexed. She was like, "What do you mean you're not kissing me?" Mm. You know, mm. and I was just like, "Look, I, I have to, I have to make sure that I guide." how we're doing this relationship different to how I've done it before. before. Um, oh, and I said, on if if I don't do it like this, I, I don't want to mess this up yeah. because mm. you don't belong to me. Mm. Wow. You know so what I mean? Good. You don't belong to me. Um, and even in courtship, to go back to your question specifically, mm. we were caught in, even in engagement, mm. I said, until this ring is on wow. my finger, you're not mine. I love yeah. that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was always and I was it's us lot. It's us lot. sorry, but it's us that yeah, are always yeah. trying to put the rules and regulations. It's true. Right. Do you get what it's I'm true. trying to say? It's to hear that from a man, it's like wow. Yeah, praise God, man. And I think to all to all the men and out there listening, like I think it's one of those things where you have to take your relationship with God seriously yeah. enough to understand that you have to lead that woman right. mm-hmm. to purity. Yeah. yeah. Do you get? Because a lot of times for us, it's always like, we just want to get what we want to get. And mm. I've been there before where it's just like, I just want my things. You get me? Yeah. But when you are saying that you're a believer, when you're saying that you want to live for God mm. and you want God to be at the center of what you're doing, there's a particular way that you have to behave mm, and yeah. you have to be committed to that process. Mm, yeah. Like it's not something that's just going to happen just as you're going along. Like yeah. you have to actually say, look, this is who I want to become. This mm. is who I want to be. And then you've got to be, same thing with me and fatherhood and stuff. I'm not saying I'm perfect, mm-hmm. but I made a decision yeah. that certain things were not going to happen or repeat in my family. Mm. And I was about it. I researched, I studied, I read I prayed. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And now that I'm in it, sometimes it's really scary as well mm. because I'm like, this thing hasn't been modeled. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people are afraid of the fact that things haven't been modeled. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like we use that as an excuse mm. yeah. to just do whatever. Well, yeah. my dad wasn't there, so boy, yeah. I'm just going to do right. what I'm doing. Mm. But 
you actually have a heavenly father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can't necessarily see him or touch him or feel him, but he's there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? His word is there. So get in there, get to know him and... Do you know what I mean? But yeah, boundaries, man. Boundaries, yeah. boundaries, yeah. boundaries. How <laughs> do you navigate lust in marriage? Hmm. That's an interesting one. Um, I think you have to make your wife or your husband the focus. Mm. Because I think for you to deviate from that is dangerous. Yeah. And you begin to now open yourself up to things that you really don't want in your marriage. At the beginning, like I said, there was a big struggle because physically for about a year and a half, like we struggled in Mm. our intimacy, right? Um, And that was really hard for me. I struggled a lot Mm. because I was like, hold on a second. I've waited. Yeah. I waited. waited. Do you get? I know I struggled along the way, but I kept my, do you know what I'm saying? And so that, that hit me hard. Um, and I think what I track, what I tracked it to be over the years was that the pornography and all the stuff that came with that was linked to depression. Mm. Wow. So as a young kid, wow. when I was going through my stuff, that was my escape. Yeah. Wow. Do you get? Yeah. And so when we're talking about lust, I think we have to be really careful mm. that we don't associate it just to pornography and masturbation yeah. and that type of stuff. Yeah. Lust is also for food. It's yeah. also for yeah. alcohol. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. whatever. Tell them. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's whatever your, I don't know how to what explain it. Whatever, you whatever your desires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James 1 says that, you know, it's because of the desire in your heart. That's mm-hmm. that's why when you're tempted, it lures you away mm-hmm. because it's what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What you get? So, um, so yeah. So for me, it was, yeah, it was tough, man. That, mm-hmm. that first year and a half struggled. Uh, try to be accountable to some of my guy friends. Try to be accountable to my wife. That was the hardest. Yeah. Because it was just like, it felt like betrayal. It mm. was like, you know, it, quote unquote, it was like an E affair, isn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? You're not, <laughs> yeah. you're Internet. not with your, do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. You're not with your spouse. Do you know what I mean? And all that kind of stuff. But lust within marriage, I think, yeah, you just have, you have to make your spouse the central point of desire mm. because Solomon tells us that we're supposed to enjoy, do you know what I mean? The, 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 the wife of, of our youth. youth. Mm. Um, so sex is supposed to be enjoyed by married people. And I think if there is an element of, l- I don't think it can be lust in marriage mm. either. Do you get what I'm saying? If you guys are in love with each other, then it's not really lust because yeah. lust makes it sound very selfish. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Where sex is supposed to be something enjoyed mm. by 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 you and your spouse, by you and your um your wife or husband. The question that I have yeah. is in terms of lust within marriage, mm. in terms of external people as well, how do you navigate that? Whew, you just gotta you just like listen, we we're we're mandem, yeah? <laughs> so we are we are stimulated by what we see. Yeah. yeah. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? We are stimulated by what we see and we can't change what we see. Yeah. <laughs> we right. can't not see it. <laughs> yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If somebody, if a girl walks in here and she's half naked and all that kind of stuff, I can't stop Mm. me from seeing her she's yeah. she's here isn't yeah. it yeah. but it's what i do with it yeah what you get yeah, and i think for the mandem it's 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 hard man Shy. it's hard mm. do you get what i'm saying but you just have to it's self-control the bible mm. says that um one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control yeah and that needs to be practiced mm-hmm. as, yeah. as, as, as much as anything else mm. um but i think with with lust with other people it's just again you have to kind of be reminding yourself Mm. this is what i do anytime i feel like my my desire or if i see someone and i'm thinking too long or i'm looking for too long i'm just like i immediately picture my wife Mm. and i and i and i have to almost sometimes tell myself you have an incredible woman you have an incredibly beautiful like I have to physically because yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah, it's so good. Sometimes it's you practical. you have mm-hmm. to you have to fight it mm-hmm. with the word. Yeah. You know the Bible said death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. So sometimes you have to speak it and mm-hmm. just say, you know what, my wife is beautiful. Is so I'm deep. in love with her. Um, I don't need anyone else yeah. but her. And so by the time you say a couple of those things, 
because the thing is god sees what you do with those thoughts yeah do you get wow. what i'm saying and, and jesus even says um i think it's matthew chapter nine don't quote me you know uh he says that you know if if a man even looks yeah. At a woman, mm -hmm. do you know? Do you get what I'm trying yeah. to say? He has committed He's adultery, committed adultery. Yeah. and it sounds harsh yeah. and it sounds really like deep and stuff. Mm. But this is the extent mm. that Jesus goes to in terms of our thought life. Yeah. yeah. So it's really important that yeah. when those things come in, that we are using the tips to now deal with it and to cut it and to say, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna run away with this thought. I'm not gonna yeah. picture anything. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? And it's almost like, and it and it humbles you as well mm. because you know yourself. You know what you're capable of imagining. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So the moment you see that thing, you just have to like say, no, no, no. Yeah. Even as a single person, not only just married. Yeah. Yeah. This is what Hello. I'm saying that as well for all. Of, even females. It's even you prepare in your singlehood. Yeah. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So yeah, just. Yeah, chop up those those thoughts as much mm. as possible. Distract yourself. Because sometimes yeah. as well, idleness is mm -hmm. the key to things yeah. entering in. Yeah. Do you yeah. get what I mean? Yeah. Uh, staying up too late, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Talking too late. And these are some of the boundaries that Oof. you have to, you physically have to say to yourself, nah, I have to stop. Yeah. yeah. And even movies as well. Some people get triggered yeah. off movies. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I've heard some Definitely. Say. You get. So yeah. it's like... Boy. You know, and sometimes the ego kicks in. It's like, no, 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 I'm a man. You get me? No, yeah. I'm cool, man. You get me? But it's like, you don't know mm -hmm. that sometimes these things are kind of playing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all it is. Like I say to people, like, you know, when we deal with um, like marital affairs and all this type of stuff, I say to people that the, the moment that the act happens, mm -hmm. the act of adultery mm -hmm. or sleeping with each other, it's not, it didn't happen in that moment. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. It happened weeks ago. Yeah. Because in that, that thought came in. Yeah. yeah, but what if you meet someone that night? Do you think like, because you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there's them ones that, Yeah, the yeah. one that stands. Yeah, 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 cool. But but that's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's, 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 it's already in you. It's, it's, it's already in you in a, in a way, but mm. it's, it's about, again, it comes down to what do you do in that moment? How mm. much do you value what you have in that moment? Mm. And I think for us as guys, sometimes the mentalities that we sometimes have is that we, we want everything. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's like, oh my God, what an opportunity. This yeah. is an opportunity mm. for me to get some. Yeah. But it's like, okay, so if you're already married, it's like, how much do you now value wow. what you have? And your yeah. life and your life before you get married as well is mm. really important. Yeah. That's why you kind of have to do self-discovery and mm. you've got to really dig into yourself. Yeah. Because if you're that kind of way with like women or men or whatever, before you get married, you really need to check that. Yeah. You really need to get that under control because when you get married, don't think that just because you got the ring, that means everything else stops. Yeah. It doesn't. And once I used to actually think that, no, 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 when I get married, mm -hmm. all of this is going to mm -hmm. go. Yeah. All of this Something lust like. is going to go. Impossible. Yeah. I thought that about everything. No, 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 no. Like, just it doesn't. Not, do you know what I mean? Not, yeah, yeah, not yeah. that, but just everything. You're like, yeah, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It continues. Sometimes yeah. it even gets worse. worse. Yeah. Do you get? Because now, <laughs> if you don't deal with yourself and how you think about things, there's now comparison. Because if mm. you've been intimate before, and yeah. let's say you save yourself and all that kind of stuff, mm. you get married. Yeah. And then it's not really kicking. Mm -hmm. You're kind of like, well... <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, I just to ask questions about that. Let's, 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 just stay, yeah. let's just stay on the topic. Go, go on, girls. Go on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. That's been one of my fears, though. Yeah. Like, that's been one of my fears because I'm real. like, it's real, it's real. I've been there. So yeah. now that I'm like abstaining, mm -hmm. yeah. how do I navigate my expectations going into marriage? Yeah. Because it it's might good. not be. It's good. What I've had previously. It's good. It's good. So it's, it's a like, good... at this point, guys, yeah, I, say I, I believe, you. yeah. I'm always like, like no, no, God's going to be like, yeah. Right. Right. So, <laughs> it's not useless. Like, I've got you, Rafina. 
But I right. told them, right. God already had someone for you. Absolutely. And you yeah. chose to taste other fruit. So now, hey. whatever the repercussions of that is, like whatever you get, that's your own because you shouldn't have tasted. What, <laughs> do you understand? No, seriously. Mm. Because that wasn't God's plan for us. Yeah. Like, that's me included. That's all of us. Like, if you yeah. just stayed in line with what God was doing in your life and mm. focused, and then you meet that one guy, you're mm. happy. Mm. Yeah. But because we were too fast and was just exploring Eating the, the forbidden fruit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now we've got <laughs> things to compare it to. So now what your soulmate, your husband who God's mm. got for you, mm. whatever he's carrying is what you have to carry. Yeah. Mm. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? That's... <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Let, 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 me, let me encourage you. Let me encourage yeah. you. Encourage you. Encourage you. I need to encourage, encourage you. Let me encourage you. <laughs> it's something that we posted on socials, actually. So, okay, so to deal with your expectations of, you know, the physical side of your relationship, you have to understand one thing, right? The foundation of any relationship is purpose, mm. right? And we say this to people and it sounds all kind of airy, fairy, whatever. But I'm telling you, if you guys get to a place where you are building your relationships on what God has for you, mm. let's just hypothetical uh, situation story is that you get with the guy and the bedroom activities is not great, <laughs> right? Yeah. But check this, okay. you've now got, the rest of your life yeah. right. to Tell them. teach each other. Yeah. Because I feel like we get into this thing where we just expect, no, 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 you just need to know what to do. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing with the relationship itself. It yeah. needs to be built. Yeah. You don't just arrive yeah. at marriage. You don't just arrive at purpose. You don't, you've got to work at it. Mm-hmm. So just like how you're going to work at the marriage, Ooh. work at communicating, work at loving each other, work at understanding each other, you got to work at the physical yeah. side. If you love the person. Yeah. And you know that this is God. Like that's, yeah. for me, yeah. that is it's the true. piece yeah. that you need to yeah. have. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the physical side. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not trying to say that it's not important. Oh, yeah. it's very important. Mm-hmm. Like when me and my wife got together, like I didn't like the way she kissed. Mm-hmm. Right. So imagine I waited three yeah. years yeah. to kiss her. Kiss her, I'm just like, why'd you kiss her? That? Right. <laughs> and she was saying the same thing to me. I yeah. was like, why do you like just no, like just like relax like we literally <laughs> guys, I'm not even lying, I'm telling you the realness, innit? Yeah. 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 Like we literally had to coach too. each other to say, yeah. no, do it like this. I don't like that your lip all over my like right. it was yeah. literally a uh, and now it's just like we don't even think about it yeah, anymore. Yeah, wow. get? And I'm telling, and and even those experiences of teaching each other, it's magical. Yeah. And I think a lot of people feel like, no, 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 I need to come, like I need to yeah. know like, what I'm doing. I can't be just, you know what I mean. And even the guys, we have our egos as well. Yeah. So we come and we do our mm. thing. We like, you know, and it's just like slow. Down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Take your time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we're talking about lust, not that's, sex. So. That's yeah, actually amazing that's so because cool. my pastor used to say to us in church, mm. like, your marriage is a garden. Mm. And when you you have to tend to that garden all Absolutely. the time. So there'll be a weed one day, and then you get you pull up the weed, but you have to go back and keep pulling out the weeds. Mm. And so I good. only thought about it like, oh, arguments or no. issues, like financial physical. issues, but it's like it's also the physical Come as well. On. Like yeah. we've got to go back to the garden. Okay, you like it like this. You don't like it like this you're learning you're uprooting you're pulling you're cleaning you're shaving you're doing all of those things it's just really really deep (laughs) can you talk to us about the role of accountability and support systems in overcoming struggles with lust yeah so you need to have somebody that you can speak to every time you get tempted Mm. in that area or when you've dropped off in that area, mm. have somebody that you can go to that you can say, look, this is what happened. And it's really difficult. This mm, accountability yeah. part, especially mm. in purity, is really, really difficult. Yeah. Um, because it sometimes it can be your boy. It can be your girlfriend. Um, it really depends. But I think that it needs to be somebody who isn't necessarily struggling with what you're struggling with. Wow. Yeah. Because then sometimes what begins to happen is you begin to kind of create this kind of pit a patter where you're just kind of stroking each other's egos. Yeah. But you need to have somebody solid that you can just be like, look, I, I messed up. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, pray for me. This is what happened. Um, I'm not proud of it, but 
I'm pressing on. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? I'm putting boundaries in place. Um, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um, and I I had that um, with a few people, actually. Um, I had about two people who I always spoke to and just let them know what was going on. Um, and it just helps because mm. at the end of the day, you have to admit your struggles. It's just like if we were talking about somebody being like drunk or an alcoholic or whatever, mm. they would need support groups. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? To be able to release and say listen it's been five mm -hmm. days since you know i took a drink or whatever and i think those principles are not just <laughs> for the the movies that we watch yeah. but it's actually practical things mm -hmm. to help us be accountable because it's a deterrent because mm -hmm. you don't want to call that phone yeah, yeah. and say yo i did it again mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um and yeah i think I that's what that. i would say what advice would you give to other men who may be struggling with lust Ooh, I would say find out what the root is mm. because a lot of times, like I mentioned earlier, like the root of lust for whatever it is, whether it's women, pornography, drink, drugs, whatever, there's, it's, it's usually out of some sort of trauma, out mm. of some yeah. sort of part of yourself where you feel like I don't, I don't want to deal with this. Mm. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an avenue of escape. Mm. Wow. And I think it's really important to identify what that is and what your triggers are. Yeah. Because I, I realized over the years that literally whenever I got depressed, whether it's a money mm -hmm. issue, whether it's a family issue, yeah. whether it's just feeling low, like yeah. I just felt rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Do you get mm. that was literally what was happening. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so identify the root of why you find yourself in that area or find yourself thinking about doing whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and then it's just about like just praying, mm. you know, mix it with accountability, obviously the people who are around you. But if you don't have any of those things, literally just read the word. Yeah. Do you get developed that relationship with God? Because I'm, I'm slowly realizing that we are, moving away from understanding how sovereign God is mm. yeah. and just how holy he is yeah. to get like, he doesn't want to punish or any of that stuff. He actually wants to love. He actually wants to take that stuff away. Mm. But yeah. a lot of times we're trying to carry it ourselves. We're yeah. trying to do it ourselves and not mm -hmm. be like, okay, no, no, no. All right. I'm not going to do it this time. Yeah. Yeah. And you hype yourself up and then it's just like, you find yourself mm -hmm. in the same situation yeah. again. Mm -hmm. um, but understanding that God is gracious mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, that he loves you. Do you get what I'm saying? And he wants you to be rid of that thing. But you doing it on your own, it's not really going to work. Never. Yeah. It's really not going to yeah. work. And also, it's going to take time. Sometimes mm. healing takes time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's not immediate. Um, but just be ready for, for the process as well. But be mm. ready to work at it yeah. as well. Do you get what I'm saying? So... Yeah. What are some of the practical steps you take and boundaries you put in place to overcome love? Um, I think it's just making sure that um, you guard yourself. Mm. So wherever that lust is manifesting or however it's like presented in your life, mm. just put things in place so that you're not in that situation. Yeah. So if yeah. you know that going to the, you know, the club or whatever, is going to put you in situations or compromising situations, just try not to. Yeah. Or, you know, if you know that, <laughs> you know, drinking is going to be happening or drugs is going to be happening, like just don't put yourself in that mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. for you to see that stuff, for you to be tempted in that way. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I also say that with a pinch of salt because I don't want you to be like, you know, scared of going into particular places, but sometimes you need to be away from it for a season yeah. Yeah. so that you can build up yourself mm -hmm. yeah. so that now it doesn't affect you. Because even like music, I was, I loved like slow jams and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But there was a season in my life yeah. where I had to shut all of that down. Yeah. Because it was just becoming too much. Yeah. Like I was being drawn into mm -hmm. this whole world. Do you know what I mean? And obviously yeah. back then it was all the ushers and all this slow jams yeah. and Joe. And, Genuine. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was all of that. <laughs> but it was just getting a lot. And actually that was feeding into my lust. Exactly. Because the stuff that them guys were talking about. Right. Like, yeah. We know more. what time it was. Right. <laughs> so I had to shut, I had to shut all of that down. Um, just so that I can build myself up. Yeah. And then get to a place where I can be like, no, nah, yeah, cool. 
Let's mm. let's let's do this. So so yeah, man. I love that. Okay, so this is a question that we ask all our guests, and we also answer it ourselves as well. Okay. So what are you letting go of and letting God? I think it's um I'm letting go of being stressed mm. because I'm I'm a planner. Mm. Um I love to plan. I love to kind of have what I'm doing kind of structured out. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing more and more that although it's good to plan and it's Mm -hmm. necessary to plan, um, I'm letting go of the kind of results of those plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because ultimately, do you know what I mean? The Bible says many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's only the counsel of God that will prevail. Mm -hmm. And I've been learning that a lot this week and just allowing myself to just be chill and Mm. just be like, look, yes, we've got to work hard. Yes, I've got stuff to do. Yes, I'm managing my family, my wife, my the church, all of this kind of stuff. But ultimately, it all belongs to God. And I can't allow myself to to carry the weight because yeah. the Bible says that he will build his church. Amen. Particularly for the church stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the gates he of hell shall not prevail. Man. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm literally taking it one step at a time mm-hmm. and not trying to hold on to it. Like my wife and I, we say this thing all the time, like hold everything loosely. Yeah. Yeah. We can't be so attached wow. to stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't be so attached to stuff that, you know, you're trying to, you're losing your hair over mm, it. Right. Like if it happens, praise God. Like we, we're prayerful people. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'd yeah. say that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Let what God about take you, the world. <laughs> um, mine's kind of similar. Yeah. I'm trying to let go of my own timing for things and mm. just trust God's timing mm. and stop putting mm. pressure on myself to have everything done yeah, at yeah, a certain yeah. time in a certain yeah. way. It's just like God's always doing a new thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I just need to trust God in my waiting season. Yeah. I think for me is doing things in my own strength Mm. and just relying on myself and my strength but actually leaning into God Mm. and his strength and allowing his power to be made perfect and his strength to be perfect in my weakness Mm -hmm. Um, I'm it's similar to both of you but it's my idol like the idolism I had of like how things in my life were gonna be when they be. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, I'm I just like, you, okay, man. God, this is what it is now. So I give it to you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing, but I made it an idol, like so many different things. My yeah. career, do you know what I mean? Like mm. just so many different things. So yeah, I'm just like, I surrender it. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Wow, I really love this episode. I know. We've learned so much. <laughs> episode, we need, yeah, wow. we need to have so you back. We need right. so you back. Back. And Thank I need you. some it's personal good. conversation of some questions that I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we'll take that offline. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank